I'm Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya, and this is Enterprise E911, the impact of technology trends. Technology trends over the past decade have done several things for the enterprise user. It's extended our connectivity well beyond the boundaries of our facilities, and in many cases, has extended our facilities well beyond the boundaries of our states. Work has become something that we do, and less of some place that we go. Today's technology allows us to bring with us our communications infrastructure while maintaining our enterprise presence. Just last week, I did a customer presentation while sitting in a hotel room in Riga, Latvia. I was on a wireless broadband device, the network was solid, and there was absolutely no perception by anyone else on the conference call as to where in the world I was. 911 was developed 44 years ago, back in 1968. And although communications technology has rocketed into the 21st century, our nation's 911 infrastructure remains relatively untouched. This creates a technology gap between the people who need help and the capabilities of their devices and the people who can provide help and the capability of their network infrastructure. Simply put, it's like trying to connect a rotary telephone to a SIP trunk. The two technologies are disparate to each other. And this brings us to the topic of our discussion today, the impact of technology trends on Enterprise E911. Unfortunately, in many cases, systems today only transmit the main telephone number of an enterprise when a 911 call is made. This creates a problem for public safety in that the location of a user within a large building may be difficult to determine. In other cases, an enterprise may have centralized their trunking and a 911 call from a remote office showed up as the main billing address. As we've said previously, our workforce has become mobile, or at least nomadic. Teleworkers using a VPN connection at their house or road warriors traveling with their smartphones connected to the network all create a single problem. Where is the 911 caller? How do I connect them with the appropriate 911 center? And how do I convey their location? In the past, solutions have been developed that will send room-level information to 911 emergency responders. Although that seems like a fix for the problem, we need to remember a few things. They're actually updating a PS Alley service database with that location information, and that might be limited to 20 characters. There may be operational overhead keeping that information current and accurate. During the initial response, what information is really important? And don't forget about the on-site notification that allows internal responders to react immediately and provide public safety with current information when they arrive on scene. So is detailed location information the answer? Well, let's look at a scenario. When providing location granularity, there are actually two pieces to that data. External information that's visible by public safety and internal information that is visible by the enterprise. Which level should you be concerned about? Well, that depends on your policy in your environment. Let's look at an example. 911 is your emergency, police, fire, or medical? Medical. I'm having chest pains. Stay calm. We're on the way. Okay, please hurry. Where in the building are you? I'm wearing blue socks. Think about it. Letting public safety know that I'm in cube 2C231 is just as irrelevant as to what color your socks are. Public safety may have never been in your building, or they may have no idea what your current floor plan looks like. As manufacturers, we build features based on what we call use cases. We establish what is typically called a user story, and that depicts the requirements for the feature. This is written in plain English and is a guide for our developers. Let's look at the use case for the enterprise administrator. What's important to you for 911? Reporting location to the PSAP, tracking user mobility, updating that location information, support for remote workers, and on site situational awareness. This is how most solutions were built today based on this use case. But when we asked public safety what their use case is, it came out a little different. They actually had two sections to their use case. The first is what is needed to dispatch. And that was the address of the emergency and what type of emergency it is. The second use case for public safety was information they needed upon arrival. Where to park the response vehicle, physical access to the area, 
and then updated incident information. So as you can see, there are some big differences in what needs to be provided and to whom it needs to be provided to and when. So let's talk for a minute about next generation 911. What you as an end user need to understand about next generation 911 is that it's a model built with standards-based interfaces and uses SIP to provide multimodal session-based communications. What is that in English? It means there's an enormous change in how you get your information to the people that can provide help. It's no longer about a telephone number referencing some obscure database that may or may not indicate where you are. It's about utilizing the data that's available in the enterprise network, correlating the relevant bits of that information, and then sending it to public safety. In short, it says, I need help. I'm here. Come and get me. It provides the situational awareness needed to dispatch the appropriate resources and then provides the additional data that emergency first responders can utilize when they arrive on scene. It also provides an end-to-end -end network to deliver that data from your enterprise network directly to a mobile data terminal or a handheld tablet device. Just to give you an example, I was talking to some folks at the European Emergency Number Association conference, and this particular person had seen some technology that provided a firefighter with a heads-up display inside of his mask. Now, the data for that heads-up display could be coming directly from the enterprise and a floor plan which would enable them to walk through a smoke-filled building in zero visibility. Now, is that a little forward-looking? Yeah, absolutely. But the fact of the matter is, technology is on the drawing board today, and next-generation emergency services networks will be providing the data for these types of services in the future, the very near future. The technology is not expensive to deploy internally today, and certainly much cheaper than doing a rip and replace in the future. This is Avaya's vision for public safety globally, and we're proud to participate with NINA in the U.S., and ENA in Europe to define the functional elements in network topology that will enable this level of advanced communications between the enterprise and public safety. Avaya is presenting two specific sessions on E911 that will cover the planning, development, and deployment, as well as the importance of E911 in light of recent disasters. We'll also host a moderated panel discussion with four of the leading E911 solution providers that will allow you to evaluate side-by-side -side the various offers for your business. Panelists attending the Great E911 debate will be 911 Enable, 911 ETC, Conveyance Systems, and Red Sky. I hope to see you in Boston, and I hope that this preview has provided you with some information that you needed to decide on why you need to be at this event.